so badly. Outside, we have 5,000 people and they can't get in. I feel badly. I want to apologize. We have uh, speakers outside, but I want to apologize. It's who would have thought we have over 5,000 people cannot get in. So now, does anybody want to leave and give you a place to somebody outside? No. <laughs> I had a feeling you might be saying that. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be with you. Uh, it's very important. You know, we're doing really well. Uh, millions of votes ahead of Cruz. Millions. You know, I get a kick. I call him Lion Ted. Lion Ted Cruz. He stands up and I'm win the, I win, as you know, you've seen it. I have been winning all of the evangelical vote. But he stands up Bible high, puts it down and then he lies. You know, it's like an amazing, it's amazing to watch it. But he said, uh, yeah, I'm the only one that can beat Donald Trump. I've done it time after time. And I said, wait a minute, I've won like most of the states. I think he had five or six, and I had 20 or 22, right? And I said, I can't believe it. Then I have millions of votes more. He says, I'm the only one that can outvote him. And I'm saying, but I have like millions of votes more. I'll tell you something so important. There is something happening. It's like a movement. It's incredible. It's a movement, and we're part of the movement. It's not me. I'm a messenger, to be honest. I'm a messenger. And... This is something that's so special and so amazing. And it's on the cover of Time magazine. It's on the cover of every newspaper. It's something that has never, that has maybe never happened. And they're saying it's a phenomena. Sometimes they say, I'm a phenomena. I'm not. The message is what we want. We want jobs. We want jobs. We want trade deals that are smart deals, not stupid deals. And, you know, Wisconsin, I wrote down some notes. And look, I didn't think I thought I had a day this year. You know, it's one of those things. Look, I wrote down some notes, and it's like, it's like devastating. So Walker came out today. I wrote down notes about Wisconsin. Look, he certainly can't endorse me after what I did to him in the race, right? But, but look at this. By the summer of 2015, Wisconsin was facing a $2.2 billion two-year budget deficit. That's terrible. By the way, these are out of books, right? This isn't Trump. This is out of books. Total state debt is $45 billion. Now, maybe somebody's going to tell me that's wrong, but again, these are... $45 billion, very high, one of the higher ones. 20,000 fewer people in labor force in Wisconsin than seven years ago, even though population has grown by 100,000. So your population is higher. And now I wouldn't have done this, but when he endorsed Cruz, what am I going to do? Am I going to say he's doing a great job? He's not doing a great job. You know, he comes in in his motorcycle jacket, a big Harley. I love Harleys, right? But the motorcycle guys like Trump. They really like Trump. And he doesn't look like a motorcycle guy to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Unemployment rate. Well, they say, I can't be possible. Unemployment rate, they have down 20%. That can't be possible. What? Is it 20%? Effective or regular? I mean, just effective unemployment rate, 20%. Hey, this is out of the big book. 800,000 food stamp recipients. Middle class hit very, very hard due to loss of manufacturing jobs. These are, the, these are the stats, right? You know about this, right? It goes on and on. Wisconsin has lost 15,000 net jobs to Mexico since NAFTA. Now, just so you understand, Kasich is running also. We forget about him. He voted for NAFTA. Both of them want TPP. TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, both of them want Trans-Pacific. That will make NAFTA look like a baby. And Wisconsin will be hit so hard. Are you a motorcycle guy? I'll bet, right? Am I right? Do they love Trump? I don't even know why. I'm not big with the motorcycles. But the motorcycle guys love Trump. Oh, look, I love the disabled veterans and the veterans. We're going to take care of our veterans. You know that, right? We're going to take care of our veterans. What is it about Trump that they like? I serious. We went to uh, Hilton Head. We went to different places. And there were hundreds, hundreds of bikers out there. 
beautiful bikes. Lots of Harleys, right? Lots of Harleys. But made in America. But beautiful, beautiful bikes. What is it with the uh, motor? Why do they like me? Tell me. We don't take any shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Who is that? I love it. I don't know what it is. But they like me. I feel good with them. I feel safe. I got out. I took a picture. Secret Service went crazy. I said, these are great people. Don't worry about it. But listen, I appreciate it, fellas. I appreciate it. I know. It does keep you free. You're right. We're going to keep you free. I'm going to keep you free. Because we're getting rid of ISIS. We're going to have good borders. We're going to have borders again. We're going to have borders again. So here, uh, here we have something that's pretty interesting. Uh, one hundred, I love you too. You lost 70,000 jobs to China. 70,000 jobs. 100,000 illegal immigrants living in Wisconsin. Taxpayers are paying tens of millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. Look, I don't know. Look. Yeah, I don't know. So what happened with Walker, and I just will finish off with this. He's a nice man. He came up to my office like about a year ago before I was, I did the run. You know, I've been a politician for what, about eight months, right? I never thought I'd be a politician. The last thing in my mind I wanted to be was a politician. But I built a great company. I filed papers. Everybody's amazing. The company is incredible. A very little debt, tremendous cash flow, some of the great assets of the world. And I say that not in a bragging way. I say that because that's the kind of thinking we need, folks. I mean, I just, we can't have China ripping us off and Mexico and Japan and Vietnam. We can't have it. We can't have it. And they are ripping us like they've never ripped anybody before. We've rebuilt China. I mean, we're rebuilding Mexico. You look the other day, you saw a carrier moving down, carrier air conditioner. I buy those air conditioners, a lot of them. I'm not buying any more of them. But carrier air conditioner moving to Mexico, Ford moving to Mexico, uh, Nabisco, home of the, uh, the wonderful, former, formerly wonderful Oreo, which we don't need anymore, right? We, we don't need it. We don't need it. Number one, it's a good way. It's a good order. It's called enforced diet. But you know what? Look, we're losing our jobs. Look at your jobs. When I see that statistic, I mean, you're losing your jobs. When I went after your governor, when he decided to run, and I said, you know, I'm going to be nice to him. He's a nice guy. The guy came up to my office. He handed me a plaque because I supported him. What do I know? I support him. I gave him fifty or hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money for a guy you never met before, right? That's pretty good. But I like the fact he was fighting, fighting. He was always fighting. You know, to a certain extent, I'd rather see somebody able to make a deal without having to go through all of that mess. But he was fighting, and I gave him a lot of money. And he came up, you know, a year ago or so, and he gave me a plaque, beautiful picture of something. I haven't. I never really got to read it, to be honest. <laughs> and I put it aside. That was it. I just had my girl find it. She just called. She said. Mr. Trump, I've just found it. A, one, a wonderful woman comes up and she, I said, where is it? She said, I think I know. And she found it under a pile of a lot of other plaques. So, so I'll bring it. I'm going to try getting it if I can tomorrow or the next day. So do we. Because I'm going to be here the whole week. I'm going to be in Wisconsin the whole week. Because, because if we win Wisconsin, it's, it's like going to be over. Pretty much over. Because we're going to do great. Emerson... Because Emerson Paul, Emerson Paul came out, I think I have 67, 68 percent in New York compared to like 10 percent or whatever. And you had Cruz talking about New York values. New Yorkers are no good. New Yorkers. I watched New Yorkers rebuild the World Trade Center. I watched New Yorkers dying. Believe me, New Yorkers are good. New Yorkers are very good. But Cruz said they're no good. So anyway, so I think we're, we're going to do great in New York. We're going to do great in New Jersey. Chris Christie endorsed me. We'll do great in New Jersey. Good guy. Uh, ben Carson endorsed me. Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin endorsed me. Sheriff Joe from Arizona. We love Sheriff Joe. And, you know, with the evangelicals, I've had so many ministers. I've had so many pastors endorse me. And uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. endorsed me. It was incredible. And we've done so well with the, with the uh, evangelicals. I mean, Christians, evangelicals, we've done so well. In fact, in South Carolina, when we went to South Carolina... That was going to be Cruz's territory. He was going to take it, except we won in a landslide. You know that. You saw it. He was there. This guy follows me around, I'll tell you. But you were there, right? You remember? He was going to win that in a landslide. And then I started speaking. I started talking to people. And I started saying, you know, the good and the bad and the ugly. And we won in a landslide. And we won the evangelicals. I've won just about, I think, 
almost every place I've won with the evangelicals. And it's been an amazing, it's been an amazing time. So now I'm here to talk to the people of Wisconsin. I have friends in Wisconsin. I've been here before. Uh, it's an incredible place, but it's a place that has problems. But you have a governor that has you convinced that it doesn't have problems. Now, I remember when he was on the campaign trail, I was so nice to him. You know, I said, how can I hit him? I'm not going to hit him. I'm not going to hit him. And I was so nice. I hit Jeb instead, right? <laughs> right? And I hit Rand, Rand, oh, Rand. And I hit a lot of people, and they all went down. Wouldn't it be nice to have a president that could just, with his mouth, make things happen that are positive? You know? But it's, it's not with the mouth. It's really with the mouth, the heart, and the brain. Remember the brain. I have a lot of friends that good, they're good with the mouth, but they're not, with, they're not good with the brain. It all doesn't work, okay? You know, we had an interesting thing today. A poll came out, a nationwide poll. It was a great poll. It was Trump 48. It was an NBC poll. Trump 48. Uh, uh, I think Cruz was second in the, in the 20s, mid-20s, something. And Kasich was way down. So what happened is they show the poll. It was an NBC poll. They call it NBC monkey poll. And it was on the Today Show. And it was on Morning Joe. Morning Joe held it up. He said, wow, those are great numbers. 48 is pretty good. You have three people, you know. I don't get enough credit for that. I've been at 42, 44, 45, and I've had like seven people. How do you get 45 when you have seven people? Nobody says that. They said, he hasn't cracked 50. And how do you crack 50 when you have all these people running? So I'm at 48. Paul was good. Way, way ahead of anybody else nationwide. And they showed Hillary Clinton. Hers is very close. She's got a little problem. Couldn't happen. Got a bigger problem with the emails than she has, I think, with Bernie, to be honest with you. <laughs> she should have. Her bigger problem should be with emails. We'll find out. We'll find out how honest our country is, right? But, but she's got a sort of close race. And they put her poll up. It was, you know, put up there, big letters. And then they said, and Donald Trump is winning. I was it. They didn't say, they didn't put numbers up. They didn't say, I'm doing great. In fact, they actually said Donald Trump is winning and they put some a little slightly negative statistic in, it was like, wait a minute, they put her numbers up and they didn't put my numbers up. Folks, it's so unfair. The press is so dishonest, it's unbelievable. <laughs> that was Chuck Todd. That was, that was Chuck Todd. Uh, this morning on the Today Show, check it out. They put Hillary's numbers up and I'm winning by a lot. And they said Donald Trump is winning. You know, let's go to a new subject, okay? Now, I guarantee you one thing. If I was losing or doing poorly, it'll still be up. It'll be up all morning. Because they don't like what's happening. I'm self-funding my campaign. I'm putting up my own money. They don't like it. Ted Cruz and Kasich are getting money from the banking industry, from the energy industries. They're getting money from the pharmaceutical companies. They're getting money from everybody. Folks, you can't straighten out this mess. We're in a mess if you can't do what you have to do. When millions of dollars are given to Cruz and Kasich and millions from different industries, you're not going to be able to say, well, we're going to do and go against the banking industry to do what's right for the people if the banking industry gave you millions of dollars. Now, that's true with Hillary also because she's gotten millions of dollars. But I'm the only one self-funding my campaign. I'm in for a lot of money. I'm in a lot of money. What was beautiful is when I was running against Jeb in New Hampshire, I was in for $2 million. Jeb was in for like $48 million. I was in first, and he was close to last. I said, who do you want as your president? By the way, did Jeb endorse anybody yet? Because I haven't, I think Jeb probably endorsed, must have endorsed. Huh? Did he endorse? That shows you how important it is. Nobody even knows. I don't even know. No, he probably, look, he'll endorse, just so you know, look. When you're in war, you gotta fight. And you fight hard. When I fight, I win. You're gonna win. You know that. You're gonna win. But you know, you do pretty serious damage, right? Because you want to win, you want to win fast. And a lot of people don't love you after you're finished. But I just love you. I don't care about them. In fact, in fact, they're asking Cruz, you know, at the debate, which, by the way, they said, I won every single debate. Now I heard the other night, I said, oh, I want to debate Trump. I've debated him 11 or 12 times. Every single online poll has me winning the debates. 
And he's an okay debater, but he's a bad talker. You know, everything's so dramatic. Oh, and he waits, phony. And he waits. You know, ever see, he goes sentence after sentence, and he stops for like three, four seconds. And then he goes again. It looks like we're in the theater. We're not in the theater. We're in the real world. So, so what happens? Thank you. That's all right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. By the way, the sheriff is here. He's a great guy and his people are fantastic. Thank you, sheriff. Thank you. The, uh, I mean, the only thing I feel so guilty about all the people outside, so feel so guilty. We're going to come back. I'm going to come back. We're going to come back to this area. You guys, you guys cannot come. Okay. All of the ladies can come, but the guys can't. But, 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 all of the people outside, we're going to take a bigger place. We're going to, we're going to get some because I feel, I feel slightly, I feel slightly guilty. But look, look, we have a very serious mess on our hands. We have a serious situation. We have a country that's not protected. We have a country that's sitting on a big fat bubble that's going to explode. In a certain way, I said, let it do now. Don't do it after I get in. Three days later, it'll explode. They'll say it's Trump's fault, okay? Ay, ay, ay. We are in a big, fat, ugly bubble. We have interest rates that are so low that if you're rich, like me, I can borrow money for any amount. If you're a hardworking guy with a great farm or you're a hardworking developer or businessman, you can't borrow money. You can only borrow money really cheaply. Think of how bad that is. You can borrow money for nothing, practically, if you're rich. But if you're rich, you don't need the money, so you don't have to borrow it. But if you're a business person, you want to go to the bank for a loan, you can't get it. The regulators are running the banks. Dodd-Frank is a disaster, by the way. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. But the biggest disaster, our regulations, our rules regulations are horrible. We're going to get rid of probably 85% of them. There are some we live with. But we got to go back. So many people from this area have told me regulations, regulatory climate is the worst they've ever seen it. I have a friend, he's a farmer. And if a puddle forms, they consider it a lake for purposes of environmental. They consider, it's like a puddle and they consider it a lake. So but we don't know what we're doing. So here's what's happening. We're going to make our country so great again. We're going to make our country so strong again. Our military is going to be so amazing. We're never going to have to use it. Don't forget, I didn't want to go into Iraq. All these guys think that I'm a tough guy, so I'll be so quick with the trigger. I'm not going to be quick. I was the slowest with the trigger. I didn't want the trigger. Now, when Obama left, though, he shouldn't have left the way he did. He gave a certain date, and the enemy said, it can't be possible. Nobody would be that stupid. Nobody. <laughs> so I actually don't think it hurt that much, because I don't think the enemy ever believed that anybody would be stupid enough to give a date. We're leaving on this date. And then he left. They said he was serious. They pulled back. They pulled back. Then you see what happened. They pulled back, and then they went in with fury. But how about the 50 soldiers? He sold a couple of months ago, a few months ago. He sent 50 of our finest. And instead of just sending them quietly, quietly sending them, what does he do? He sends them in and he makes a big press conference or announcement that we are sending 50 soldiers into Iraq, Syria. And now the, the soldiers have a big target on their back. Why can't we just keep our mouth shut? Why can't we be... Unpredictable. Unpredictable. Right? Why can't we be unpredictable? Why does he have to... First of all, it doesn't even sound good when you say 50 soldiers because it sounds like so small. People would say, is that good or bad? I mean, that sounds small. But then when you think about it, why, why do we have to say that? These are extraordinary people. These are our finest. And they're, you know, very dangerous mission. Why would you tell people that we're sending them in? You just keep, you keep quiet and let them accomplish something. They are right now, who knows what's happened to them. But right now they have a big target on their back. People that we've let go of Gitmo have now killed Americans. You've seen that. You saw that yesterday. That came out yesterday. We let people go out of Gitmo and they kill Americans. Okay. Uh, is anybody surprised at that though? Would anybody be surprised? And we're keeping it open. Now they're spending you know, hundreds of millions to run it. I guarantee you could run it a lot cheaper. You'd have a lot of money left over. 
So we're going to get efficiency in government, but we're going to end Obamacare. We're going to we're going to replace it. We're going to replace it with something so much better and so much less expensive. We're going to get rid of Common Core. We're going to bring our education local. We are going to preserve our Second Amendment. It's under siege. It's totally under siege. And Christianity's under siege. I'll tell you. Christianity's under siege. You take a look. I, I'm with these. I, I'll tell you what. I've been with so many pastors lately. And uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. is an example. Was telling me that. Uh, well, first of all, he told me something. He says, you remind me so much of my father. I thought his father was a great guy. What his father did with Liberty College and Liberty University. And then Jerry, to top it off, has taken that to a whole new place. But when Jerry was so strong and so great. But I was talking to, I probably had 50 of the ministers and pastors, different folks came up to my office. And they're really under tremendous pressure because they don't want to have their tax-exempt status taken away. This happened during the Lyndon Johnson presidency. And I said, why is it that you folks are pushed around so much? Christianity. These are the pastors. And these are strong people. These are really strong people. Why do you allow them? Why aren't you more forceful? And finally, somebody said, well, we have to be a little careful of our tax exempt status. I said, when did that happen, actually? It was during the Johnson. Well, we're going to try getting rid of that, okay? Because that's really terrible. We're going to try getting rid of And I've said that to... I've said that to a lot of evangelicals, a lot of great Christians. We're going to try getting rid of it because it's taken, it sort of means that somebody walking down the street has more power than somebody of religion, of, of our religion, of Christianity, somebody that's an evangelical. You take anybody, they have more power because these people are powerless. They've actually taken their right of free speech away. So I said, we're going to try and get rid of that, and I think we'll be very, very successful. You know, it's interesting. I said, how many Christians are there? Because, you know, we got men, we got women. You cut it in half, we actually have a few more women. But we have far more Christians than we have men or women. So in a way, it's the most powerful lobby. It's the biggest group of people. But we're not allowed, they're not allowed to talk because they're petrified. You saw what was happening with the IRS and you saw what was taking place with regard to certain groups. So we are going to try, and, and usually when I say try, that means I'm going to get it done. That means I'm going to get it done. <laughs> But we are going to try very hard. We're going to get that brought back. And I think it's going to be very hard to counter it because if the Christians and if the, look, if the whole evangelical Christian sector gets together, nobody, nobody can beat. You know, when I made the statement about Muslims, banning Muslims on a temporary basis, I took such heat. Now people are saying, you know, Trump is sort of right about that. Now they're all going, wow, because they see what's happening. And I think if I would have said it about Christians, I would have had less opposition. That's what's happened in this country, okay? That's what's happened in our country. And we can't, we can't let it happen. We're going to turn this country around, and we're going to be the smart people. We're not going to be the dummies anymore. We're not going to be where China made last year trade deficit $505 billion, with a B, billion dollars. Japan, over $100 billion. Mexico... $58 billion. We're going to build a wall, and Mexico's going to pay for the wall, okay? I remember recently I was in Florida, and Marco, who's a nice guy, actually. You know, he, you notice how nice they are after you've defeated them? I like everybody I defeat. But when I went against Marco, it was supposed to be a very... <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. Well, he started it, right? Just like Cruz started the last deal, he, he started it. But, but Marco came after me very viciously. You know, he wanted to be Don Rickles, right? And it didn't work. But what happened is, what happened is I won by 20 points, almost 20 points. And, and a lot of these issues we were talking about, it was big issues. And frankly, I wish I would have left about two days early. I wanted to stay in Florida campaign. I wish I would have devoted two more days to Ohio because I almost won in Ohio. I would have won Ohio, but I didn't want to take a chance on leaving my beautiful Florida alone because I love Florida and I wanted to win that. So if I would have left a couple of days early, I think I would have won Florida probably by the same, but I'm not going to have anything happen in Wisconsin. We have to win. If we...
Look, we have to put these politicians in their place, folks. It's time. And believe me, you know, Cruz likes to pretend he's an outsider. In the meantime, he gets all the establishment support, including your governor. Uh, so believe me, believe me, they're all establishment. And frankly, in a way, it's worse because Cruz is establishment, and yet he's got no relationship with the establishment. He goes and he stands on the floor of the Senate for a day and a half, and he filibusters. And these senators, look, I know, they're tough cookies. I have the best, I have one of the great people, Senator Jeff Sessions. He's great. Nobody better than Jeff. And, you know, Cruz thought he was going to have him, and he'd use him in his speech as Senator Jeff Sessions, and then he comes out and he endorses me. But when you think of it, look, out of all of these senators, he has one supporter, Lee, who's his friend. I mean, it's his friend. But I'm sure, and by the way, it took him plenty of time to do it. But, you know, to stand there and to rant and rave for two days and to show people, you know, you can filibuster. In the meantime, nothing was accomplished. Cruz has not accomplished one thing. So he's an insider, but it's almost like the man on the street because he can't get anything done. He dislikes people. He calls people like, for instance, he said horrible things about the speaker. And, and you know, the, uh, he said about the speaker. And he said about separately Mitch McConnell. I mean, he said some terrible things about how do you get things done when you're calling Mitch McConnell bad names, okay? Let's just say bad names. So he's sort of got the worst of all elements. He's an insider totally, but he can get nothing done, okay? He can get nothing done. Uh, your new speaker, how do you like Paul Ryan? How do you like him? Do you like him? Or you don't like him? All right. Wow. I was told be nice to Paul Ryan because, really? All right. Well, he's the speaker. He's a nice guy. He called me the other day. He was very nice. But I'm a very surprised at this statement. Wow. Are you all Republicans? Are you mostly conservatives? Because I don't care. You know the word, I always say I'm a commonplace, a, you know, just a common sense conservative. And so, so important. A common sense. And then somebody told me today that somebody else, I think Walker used my term. You know, Walker used, I said, make America great again. I said, make America great again. And I copyrighted the term. And then Walker was making a speech many months ago when he first started. And he was saying, make America great again, because he saw the response I got. The difference is he didn't get any response, you know, so I didn't help. But we told him, you can't do that. That was the first little problem I had with him. He said, you can't do it. Now I said a common sense conservative. And today I heard he used the term because the press was up and they interviewed me. And they said, he said he's a common sense conservative. Well, I coined the phrase a few months ago. But that's what I am. I'm a conservative person. I'm very, very conservative on the military. I'm very conservative with our vets and on health care and on lots of things. But, and I'm actually very conservative on trade, but a lot of people would say he's not that conservative on trade because he doesn't believe in free trade. Well, actually, I do believe in free trade. But it's got to be good trade for us, right? It's got to be smart trade. It can't be where Wisconsin's losing thousands and thousands of jobs, where you folks can't get into China, but China comes in here like it's, like it's Swiss cheese. That's what happens. You know, China does not obey the rules. Now, I get along great with China. I made a fortune dealing with China. I have two buildings because of China, big ones in New York and one in San Francisco, Bank of America, that I have in partnership with a great company. And it's because of China. I sell, I have the biggest, one of the big leases with one of their big banks, with the biggest bank in the world actually from China. I sell millions and millions of dollars to cond of condos to people from China. I like China. I'm not angry at China. I like them. I think their leaders are doing a great job for them. But our leaders are doing a bad job for us. Same with Mexico. I get along great. The Hispanics, I love the Hispanics. I love the Hispanics. But their leaders are killing us on the border and they're killing us on trade. And I'm not angry at them. I'm angry at our country and our leadership because it's grossly incompetent and we're going to change it around. And we're going to get the best and we're going to get the finest. So what I thought I'd do. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So whatever you can do to spread the word. Uh, I'll be around. I'm going to Green Bay. I love that team, by the way. You talk about a great franchise. No, I love it. 
and you have a truly great quarterback. I don't know. He's probably endorsing somebody else, but I don't care. He's still a great quarterback. Tom Brady's a friend of mine. He said you have a great quarterback. That's all I need, right? When Tom says he's a great quarterback, that's pretty good. But, you know, I really want to win Wisconsin because if we can win Wisconsin, we're going to put all this stupidity away. We're going to put these, these stupid, stupid people that allow, and I'm talking about basically politicians. And in many cases, you know, a lot of times people will see deals that are done. And I mean, take a look at the Iran deal. How bad is that? I mean, just as a deal. Forget about countries. But many times people will say deals that the country makes, right? Deals. Are, and they'll say, how can our politicians be so stupid? They're not stupid. They've been hit by the lobbyists and the special interests, and they make a fortune. Okay? They get tremendous campaign contributions. They're not stupid. They're doing it for themselves. So again, I'm not doing that. I'm doing for you. I'm working for you. But just remember, they're not so stupid like you think. But when you look at the people funding Cruz's campaign and Kasich's campaign, and you look, don't forget, Cruz said, oh, the banks, the banks, you know, he's going to be Robin Hood. He's going to be this great guy. And then in his personal financial disclosure form, he forgot to mention that he borrowed like about a million dollars from the banks, Citibank and, and Goldman Sachs. He borrowed a million dollars at an interest rate that everybody in this room would be proud to have. A very low interest rate, almost no interest. He forgot to announce it on his personal financial disclosure form. He just forgot. He said, oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. You know, so then he hits the bank. He's controlled by these people, folks, okay? I mean, what he did was absolutely wrong. But they're controlled by these people. I'm controlled by you. I'm going to do the right thing for you, okay? So remember that. So let's take a few questions, and then I'm off to Green Bay. I love that. Okay, let's go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. My biker, my biker friends. We have to start with them. 22 veterans get killed for killing 22 veterans a day commit suicide. That's correct. Over either wealth or not having a job or, or PTSD. What's your plans on that? We're going to take care of our veterans so much. Look, let me tell you. They, uh, many of them kill themselves waiting for a doctor. They can't even get to see the doctor. You know that. They end up killing themselves before they see the doctor. 22 a day. And a lot of people don't even believe that number. They think it's almost like an impossible number. How could it be so bad? And it's actually could even be worse than that. But we are going to take care of them from the standpoint. They wait. They wait. Then they get bad service. And they wait some more. Six, seven, eight days. And sometimes they'll get to see the doctor. And the doctor says, I can't see you now. I'm going on vacation. You see the corruptness. I just left Phoenix. We had 21,000 people. Uh, Sheriff Joe was there. The job he did was incredible. Incredible. You know, they had a little protest, right? Uh, that protest ended so quick. He arrested three people. Everyone else scattered. You know, a lot of... And you have that kind of a sheriff here. You have a tough cookie here. I can tell you. I just met him and I can tell you. But we're going to... You know, I have a great policy plan and I've gotten a lot of credit for it. In, in, it's on DonaldJTrump.com. And with the veterans, when they're waiting for exorbitant times, even for a little time, they're going to go to the doctor, they're going to go to local doctors or local hospitals. Many of the hospitals are dying for business. You know that. They're dying. These hospitals, some of these hospitals are dying. They're going to get immediate treatment, immediate service. We're going to pay the bill, and we're going to save a fortune, and they're going to get great service. And everybody is in love with it. Everybody loves it, and that's what's going to happen. So we're going to take care of our veterans. If we can't take care of our veterans, we can't take care of anyone. So we're going to take care of our vets. Go ahead. One more from my other biker friend here. Boy, do you look good, though. You look good and tough. I wouldn't want to fight you. You think I could take you in a fight? I don't think so. What do you think? How about we do it right now? That would be great for television. Go ahead. But I do have more hair than him, right? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. I know, it's terrible. Why do they say, I mean, if you can say it, why are you unemployable? Okay, I got it. But. Right, I know that. 
Take care is a problem. I know. Right. So then my wife only gets a hundred dollars a month, and my child only gets fifty dollars a month. Right. I know. So I've heard this it's many times. a very times. big offset between. Let, let me tell you. Here's the problem. Our veterans are taken worse care of than illegal immigrants that come into the country illegally. Okay. So not, not, you don't even have to write it down. We're going to do things about it. Not, not you know what? Because I know. You know what you're saying. I've heard this so many times before with the daycare and everything else. Uh, we are going to take care of our vets. Well, okay? us veterans also don't get an annual increase. Because, That's right. Well, you can do an exact. And by the way, uh, by the way, speaking of increase, Cruz and Kasich want to destroy your Social Security, folks. Okay. I want to bring money back into this country. I want to bring jobs into this country. I want to bring tremendous wealth into this country. I want to take our wealth back from China, from Mexico, from all of these countries that have our wealth. They've taken it like we're a bunch of babies. And we're going to save you Social Security and we're going to save you Medicare. They want to get rid of it. Okay, remember that. Well, without saying that too, is also that you can give a veteran with a disability and or permanent total an annual increase automatically. You could do that. Because you could do an executive you could order. Do that. Right? Well, you could do it. I want to, I want to not use too many executive orders, folks. Well, you yeah, know, because, you know, executive orders sort of came about more recently. Nobody ever heard of an executive order. Then all of a sudden, Obama, because he couldn't get anybody to agree with him, he starts signing them like they're uh, butter. Uh, so I want to do away with executive orders for the most part. But look, just do me a favor. Stick with me. You're going to be okay. All right? All right? Okay? You're going to be okay. I know. What you've said, I've heard a hundred times. And the daycare is a huge problem. A huge problem. And your wife not working? Huge problem. She can't. So anyway, and I'll bet you have a great wife. Good wife? Better believe it. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I work at education. I work at education. Right. What are you going to do to uh, help get the local control back to our Well, what we're doing, we're ending Common school. Core. You're not going to be educated. Your kids in Wisconsin are no longer going to be educated in Washington, D.C. by bureaucrats Many of whom, I can't say all, but many of whom don't care for your kids. They couldn't care less. They get big, fat salaries. Your kids are going to be educated locally. We're terminating Common Core. And you will see something. You will see something that's magic. And I've seen it where parents and all of these people, they're all in the, the uncles, the aunts. They're all on school boards. They get professionals. They have great principals. You can't see what's going on from Washington, D.C. Many of the people never even come here. They sit behind a desk in Washington, they draw big salaries, and they're telling you how to educate your kids. Not going to happen that way. And I've even seen it where the kid graduates, the child graduates, and those parents stay on. They love it because their child went through the system. They love it, and they become so good at it. That's what's going to happen. We're one of the worst in the world in education. We're going to be one of the better ones. Not necessarily, you know, I don't know that we're going to beat Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and China. But we're going to come very close, okay? Yes, go ahead. Discipline in school. I don't think that Wisconsin should have a big problem with discipline. Do you have a problem with discipline? You're from where? Rochester, Minnesota. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay. Well, we have to get discipline back in the country. Forget about school. We have to get discipline. I mean, I have a case. I have a wonderful guy, a campaign manager. You talk about discipline. And you probably saw what happened today with my campaign. He's a good guy, Corey. Yeah. And by the way, the easiest thing, Corey, you're fired. I can't do that. Can't do it. So fortunately, I have a taping system. You know, very, I'm rich, so I have tapes all over. <laughs> so this young woman who complained was, oh, she was talking about being maybe thrown to the floor and all this. I said, oh, that's horrible. And then we saw the tapes. Did anybody see the tape? What did you think, right? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Women are so... What did you think? What did you... She just kept walking. There was nothing wrong. I mean, she wasn't like her face stayed the same. I if somebody squeezed your arm or did something really bad, don't forget, initially she said thrown to the floor. But if somebody squeezed your arm or hurt you, wouldn't you start screaming or something? Immediately. Did you see any change in her face? She keeps I following you. you. Yeah, it's the same. That it's, all came 
It's horrible. It's horrible. It's honestly, it's horrible. And the best thing I could do is say, but I can't destroy a man. I destroy him. He's got a beautiful wife and children, and I'm not going to destroy a man for that. And you know, when I saw that at the tape, at first I said, oh, this is terrible. Then I saw the tape. It's my tape. I'm the one that has the tape. It's on the ceiling of this incredible club in, in Jupiter, Florida. And we're all leaving. And we have a press conference, right? And the press conference lasted a long time. It was like 45 minutes. So that was enough. I'm leaving with a whole big gang of people, people pushing left and right, left and right. And all of a sudden, she bolts into the picture. She, ha she grabs me or hits me on the arm. In fact, I'm like this with my arm up. And then he goes by, and I'm, I mean, maybe he touched her a little bit, but I didn't, it was almost like he was trying to keep her off me, right? They were like supporting her so she wouldn't fall. She came right in there. Like he was helping her. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And did you see her fall to the ground? No, okay. She didn't because fall. she talked about falling to, now after, her, now I must tell you, her statement changed big league because she said, go to the ground, you know, all this. I could read it to you. Does anybody want to hear it? <laughs> I mean, I want to be accurate because I like the press to treat me. So before she knew she was on tape, she said, I was jolted backwards. Was she jolted backwards? I mean, if she was, her face stayed the same. So, I mean, I was jolted backwards. Someone grabbed me tightly by the arm and yanked me down. Campaign managers aren't supposed to forcefully throw reporters to the ground. Except she never went to the ground. She never even came. She never even flinched. She didn't. You know, if somebody grabs you, even one of the guys, even the bikers, if somebody grabs even a biker or punches you a little bit, you go, whoa, right? I mean, the toughest guy, the toughest woman. Look at her face. It's zero. They're going to destroy a man's life. And then I have crews saying, oh, that was a terrible thing. That was a terrible thing. Let me tell you something, folks. If I win, if I lose, I didn't need to do this. I'm doing this because I just had a beautiful grandchild <laughs> with Ivanka, through Ivanka. Ivanka and Jared, beautiful, beautiful grandchild. I'm very proud. It's my eighth. I'm doing this all for them. I didn't need to do this. This is not so easy. And I had no idea, you know, maybe none of us did. You know, I, I had no idea the message was going to get across. It's a message of competence. You know, it's a message. It really is. It's a message of common sense and it's a message of competence. And I had no idea that we'd have millions of more votes than we had when we had that stiff Mitt Romney, a total stiff <laughs> running. Who, by the way, he's a dope. He's not a smart person. I'll tell you right now. Let me, let me tell you about Mitt Romney. That was an election that he should have won and he lost. And he should just go away and let the big boys do it now. Because you know what? That's an election that should have been won. And you know, I bit, I'll tell you what. I helped uh, John McCain. And at that time, honestly, that was a tough deal for him. Because the world was sort of collapsing. And that was a tough one. But he lost. And I helped Mitt Romney a lot. And he lost. And I said, this time, we're going to do it ourselves. Okay, we're going to win. We're going to win. So just remember that. We're going to win because of Wisconsin, I hope. Okay, a couple of more questions. How about a woman? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Great. Right. She's so smart. I don't want him to know. I don't want to tell Putin what I'm thinking. She's so smart. What you just said is, what does that say? What about Ukraine? Don't worry about Ukraine. Ukraine's going to be fine. Just don't ask me why. You know, you know, it's just this world of politics. Mr. Trump, you said, don't forget, I'm the one that said, take the oil. I was right. They didn't take the oil. You know who has the oil right now? ISIS has the oil. You know that Libya, ISIS has all that oil from Gaddafi, all of that big oil from Gaddafi. He took it. We're like a bunch of dummies. Why aren't we embargoing? Why aren't we creating a nice big circle so they can't get the oil out? Why are we taking that oil back? Look, look, I'm the one that says, though, I don't want to say everything. If I win, I have a good chance of winning. I'm the front runner by a lot. I want to go in there. I want to knock the hell out of ISIS. I don't want to tell all. I really mean this. 
I don't want to tell everybody in this room, and look at all the cameras that are going now. I don't want to tell the world what I'm going to do. Because they're watching. Just let me do it, folks. I will do it. You will be so happy. You don't have to know the details, okay? Let me do it. You know, I used the word before. We have to be a little bit unpredictable. We can't say, well, we're going to go and attack on March 14th, and then we're going to hit them from the front, and then we're going to hit them from the back. You know, Obama did that eight months ago with one of the cities. He said, we're going in next week. Look, folks, 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 you know, you have to trust. There has to be some trust, right? Do you trust? We've got to stop. We've got to stop the stupid. That's why I really think your question is so great. I don't want to hear how you're going to do it, Mr. Trump. Just do it. I'll do it. Okay? I love that. I, that, that woman. That woman. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Mr. Trump, Melissa wants to thank you. She's got something to say. Okay. Hi. Hi, Mr. Trump. Um, I was Miss Wisconsin, USA in 2005. Okay. And... Um, I can see why. Thank you. Um, you have been, I just want to say thank you. You saved me in so many ways. And in recent years, um, I've been struggling um, with an incurable illness and I'm on home care now. It was caused by a doctor's medical negligence. And in those dark days fighting, um, right now all the tubes have been removed and I have a do not resuscitate order and I have a seven year old son. And in those days in the hospital, I received from you a handwritten letter that said to the bravest woman I know. And I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And you, um, Such a wonderful, beautiful woman. I mean, just an amazing woman. And are you, are you doing, are you coming along okay? Um, um, no, sir, but um, that's okay because I'm here right now to thank you in person and that was my biggest dream. And I wanted to thank you because through you and your organizations, my son, who is Mexican-American, seven years old, through your organizations and just being able to stand on that stage with you back in 2005, the outpouring of love that came from that, um, ultimately provided my son, when he graduates high school, with a, um, a full ride to college. And that That's great. Oh, yeah. and, uh, you. and you know what we'll do? We're going to watch him. You're going to watch him, Tana. Tana, watch him. And, uh, We're going to be watching your boy, okay? But you're going to hopefully you. be around. You're not going to have to have anybody thank watching. You. You're going to hopefully be around. Those doctors are going to be so wrong. And my but son, we'll be helping you. So we thank you. God bless you. And just, you know, he's a Mexican-American. And you, because of your efforts, have sent him to college. And I've been writing letters to him for when I'm in heaven to tell him that what you've done for him. Now, he has a great responsibility to pay it forward, just as you have done for us. And I can't thank That's you. That's so nice. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I have to go down and say hello. Is that okay? Thank you. Oh. 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 Wow, what a great woman that is. That's a great woman, great mother. I remember that, and it's, uh, it's heartbreaking, but it's something beautiful is going to happen. You watch. Something beautiful is going to happen. Folks, uh, I just want to say, I, I'd almost like to leave it on that because we can't top that. That is so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know, the, that little, uh, very sad, but I think it's going to be a, a really a story of hope and something that is really great is going to happen out of that you watch. But uh, it sort of tells me when I first did this, people said, oh, it'll cost a lot. Forgetting about the campaign, that's peanuts by comparison. You know, I spent tens of millions of dollars. But the big thing, I lost certain businesses. 
And I owned the Miss Universe pageant. I bought it very inexpensively many years ago, 15 years ago. And because of the fact that they thought I was against this one or that one, I had a hard time with television. Now, the good news is I sold it for a wonderful, I was very happy, okay, with that. But I didn't want to sell it, but I sold it. And I, I built it to a, really a very good company. We did a great job with that company, Miss Universe, Miss USA, Miss Teen USA. But other businesses, I, I sort of like the shirts and the ties with Macy's. Macy's was unbelievable, dis, unbelievably disloyal because of illegal immigration. And they ended the shirt size. Who cares? I mean, it's not a big deal. But I'm doing something. Nobody else is giving up what I'm giving. I mean, when Cruz runs, he runs. If he wins, great. If he loses, great. He doesn't, you know, it's him. He's a politician. They just, they run, they win, they lose. Who knows? But these guys run for office. That's all they do. I've always heard that if you're a very successful person, you can't run for office, especially for president. You just can't run for president. And I can see it. I have so much false press about me. S things that are so false. They're, do you know, I, I saw the other day on television, there were like 50, did you see it? 56,000 negative ads on me. 56,000. In fact, in Florida, I owned Doral, and in Florida, we had the tournament there two weeks ago. Adam Scott, the great Adam Scott, great golfer, he was winning. And in between shots, I told you this after the victory speech, in between, they'd have commercials, and they were all about Trump. Negative, horrible negative commercials. Mostly false. Mostly, not all false, but mostly false, I have to be honest. But it came out the other day, I think it said $68 million, 55,000 negative ads. Negative ads. And when I was running in Florida, I said, how is it possible to win? I mean, with all of this, because I knew it. I mean, you couldn't turn on, in Florida, where I was, you couldn't turn on the television without seeing Trump commercials, sometimes four or five in a row. And they were horrendous, done by very, very bad people, very bad, evil people. And I said, how is it possible to win? And God helped me, honestly, because, because I won in a landslide. I won by almost 20%. So... And now they're doing it here, Club for Growth. It's a crooked outfit. Look, Club for Growth, you ever hear this, Club for Growth? A friend of mine comes, would you, he's a conservative guy, he calls, would you do me a favor, see Club for Growth? I said, what's Club for Growth? He said, well, they want to talk to you. I said, all right, send them up. He's a friend, he's a good guy. And now I'm in politics, so I have to see people that I wouldn't normally, you know, I'd say, give me a break. So Club for Growth, Club for Growth, they come up to my office. This guy was, I think, a former congressman. And he tells me a little bit about Club for Growth, I'm falling asleep. And then he goes, and then he goes, would you contribute one million dollars? I said, million dollars for what? I don't even know you, I never met you. I said, do me a favor, I'm trying to be nice. And I said, do me a favor, go back, write me a little note if you can. And he was stupid enough to write me a note. He writes me a letter asking for one million dollars. I let him know that I'm not interested. You know, you can be rich. I'd rather take a million and throw it all over to this room. I'd rather give it to you for your boy. Okay, and so what happens, what happens is they write me a letter, put it in writing, I give you the letter. Some of you, has anyone seen this letter they wrote? It's incredible. They write me a letter, it's like extortion. They asked me for a million dollars, I said no, nicely. And then they're doing ads all over Wisconsin, Tr Club for Growth, they did them all over Florida. Club for Growth, about uh, eminent domain. By the way, without eminent domain, you wouldn't have highways, you wouldn't have schools, you wouldn't have hospitals, you wouldn't have bridges. You need eminent domain. If something's in your way and you're building a highway, if you're going to produce 7,000 jobs and you need a little corner of somebody's property every once in a while. You know, it's funny. These guys all want the Keystone Pipeline, right? Everyone. Conservatives. No, conservatives want the Keystone Pipeline. I like the Keystone Pipeline, too. But they have a whole big thing on eminent domain in their prospectus. Because without eminent domain, they wouldn't go 15 feet. They wouldn't be able to build it. So they have a whole, so they don't want eminent domain. They do commercials about eminent domain. They love the Keystone Pipeline. And the whole Keystone Pipeline is based around eminent domain. Because you got to go from Canada, where Cruz was born, to Texas, where he's representing. Think of it. This guy. And don't forget that. Remember what I said. I'm going to win. Just remember what I said. I'm going to win. And I thank you, baby. I thank you. She's, she's saying, oh, please win. Oh, you are so amazing. You are so amazing. I'm going to win. But remember this. If for some reason he does, it gets the nomination. The first thing, just remember I'm a good prognosticator. I'm a good predictor. The first thing that's going to happen 
is the Democrats are going to sue Ted Cruz. He was born in Canada. He lived there for four years. The head of the Harvard Law School, one of the top people in the business in terms of constitution, is saying that, you know, he's wrong. And we have other people that are much, much stronger than even that. So remember this. If Cruz gets lucky and he wins, and the only way he can get lucky is if he doesn't get, if I, because it's all establishment. You know, if I go into that whole mess of the convention, I'm not the establishment. I don't take their money. I don't hire their people. I don't do any of that stuff, okay? So you have a disadvantage. But if Cruz wins, remember what I said. Just remember. Again, he's not going to win, but if he does, if he gets a nomination within the first few days, he will be sued by the Democrats that he doesn't have the right to be president. And I think they're right because he wasn't born on our soil. He wasn't born. He's not a natural born citizen. He's not a natural born citizen. I don't like to make a big deal of this, but it was just brought up by somebody. He is not a natural born citizen. So if for some reason he should get the nomination, I really believe you're wasting your time. And boy, do we have a problem. Because you're going to have somebody that's going to be sued, probably will lose the lawsuit. Again, he was born there, lived there for four years, mother was there, the whole thing for a long period of time. And he was a Canadian citizen, joint with U.S., until 14 or 15 months ago. Did anyone know that? So he's a senator from Texas, only because of the great Sarah Palin, by the way. Without Sarah Palin, he could have never won that election. It was a fluke. But he was a senator from Texas. He lived, he's a joint citizen. Now he finally gave up his citizenship to Canada like 16 months ago. He said, oh, I didn't know I was a citizen of Canada also. <laughs> Does anybody, just like he didn't know that Goldman Sachs and Citibank gave him money. I mean, this guy is, you, you just have to study it, folks. Look, again, I'm doing this. We're going to win. We're going to turn this country around. We're going to make America great again. We're going to win a lot. But you have to know the facts. I love you all. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.